everyone, it's Nicole today. I'm here to review Carry On by Rainbow Roll, which is a book I enjoyed greatly and I know that a few people decided not to read for various reasons. I was on the fence myself and I had a few doubts, but when I read the first few chapters of it, I decided that it's worthy and it actually was. I really enjoyed the ride. The goal of this video is to get rid of all the preconceived notions about this book and to tell you that it's actually good and it's worth your time. It's the first outright fantasy novel that Rainbow Borough published and a few people were concerned that this book is not going to be as good as her contemporary books. I disagree because for the most part the fantasy world was executed perfectly, especially taking in account that this book is supposed to be a seventh book in a series that we didn't read and have no opportunity to read because they are not written. But let's get to it in a timely manner. First I want to describe the plot to you. This is the book that was mentioned in Rainbow Rowell's other novel named Fangirl and I believe a lot of people read it and know what I'm talking about. The protagonist of Fangirl was writing fan fiction for Simon Snow series and the story that she was working on in Fangirl during the whole length of the novel was Carry On. Because Fangirl was so popular, Rainbow Rule decided to write Carry On as a separate novel, which now I'm holding in my hands. The story is about Simon Snow who is the worst chosen one of his magical world. He's supposed to be extremely powerful but he cannot control his power. He has two friends, a guy and Penny, one of whom he's dating, and a roommate named Buzz, who he suspects of being a vampire. His obsession with Buzz suggests that there's something more to their relationship than simple disdain. But Simon's life is not only teenage drama, because he as a chosen one has to stop an evil monster named Humdrum. Of course, this book sounds a lot like Harry Potter, and most people uh, said that they will not read this book because they are so alike, and that a carry-on sounds like a um, cheap ripoff from Harry Potter. But I will give you a few arguments why you should read the book even if you love and respect Harry Potter that much. I have three points to make my case, so hear me out. It's true, it's similar to Harry Potter, it takes its inspiration in Harry Potter and you will easily recognize it as something that was based on the series of books. But at the same time, Rainbow Rose's goal is not to write Harry Potter in her own way. Her point is to take same plot points and similar similar characters or situations and to twist them in a different way. For example, let's take Simon Snow and the popular trope of being a chosen one. She presents a chosen one as a different type of character that we've ever seen. This, this chosen one is not only extremely insecure about his position, but he's also not being a good chosen one type of character. Let's take his relationship with his girlfriend. In Harry Potter and in many other fantasy series, the hero of the story, for most part a male hero is always presented with a perfect girlfriend. It's always a woman, she's always a perfect companion to our hero. At least she is presented from that point of view. She is the trophy wife the protagonist is going to receive in the end as his prize for doing a great job. And in this novel we are actually presented with a couple that is breaking up and with Simon's realization that this girl might not be the greatest match for him, even though she is perfect and their life is supposed to be perfect together, but maybe it's not going to work, maybe perfect is not always good. Then let's take into account why this novel is so enjoyable to read, even when we know that it's inspired by Harry Potter. This novel doesn't claim originality, it doesn't deny being a parody on Harry Potter. Even though it's a parody on Harry Potter, it presents a story in a very different way and is playing a part of a commentary on Harry Potter. The book says I'm proud. I'm not fan fiction, I'm a parody. I'm going to show you something different and I hope you like it. There is no snobbishness in this book and that is the part that I really enjoyed. The second point I would like to make is that this novel dealt greatly with the goal that was given. It is the seventh book to a series that doesn't even exist, that we don't know anything about, and it tells a story perfectly because it manages to first introduce world building that is different to Harry Potter, the magic system works differently, to present a conflict, to introduce the characters, to make you love them, and to be continuously good from the start till the end. So, in my opinion, Rainbow Roll did a great job, because it's not easy to write an ending to a series that doesn't even exist. Of course, the part that it's being a Harry Potter party helps, because we have quite a few expectations books, and we read Harry Potter books and know quite a bit of what to expect and carry on. But at the same time, this novel works perfectly as a standalone. Well, it is a standalone, I mean, 
as a standalone in terms of Harry Potter series. You can be unfamiliar with Harry Potter series, but you will still recognize the plot points because if you read fantasy, they are very common. The third point that I would like to make that this book is not pointless because it's the type of book that I call a dream made alive. Basically, this book is more diverse Harry Potter with a more realistic approach to some of the fantasy tropes, which a lot of people struggle with and a lot of people comment on when they review other fantasy books. It's not as sugar-coated as Harry Potter in some places, for example, but also it sustains a certain level of humor, so you won't be swamped in angst from the start till the end. We have women whose power is not only there, but it is recognized. We also have our protagonist, who turns out to be not only a chosen one, but also queer, who has a relationship on screen I mean, in the book, there's a diversity of race in this novel. And I believe that's the crucial part of this novel and why it's so successful. Because for a very long time, J.K. Rowling fans asked her to make her books more diverse. And she only said that they are, but they were not on the page. Even with her new books and with her new franchise, she cannot satisfy the readers in this term. Rainbow Roll showed that this type of book can be satisfying and entertaining and great. And I honestly was very, very very happy when I was reading this book because after years of reading conservative fantasy I finally had this pat on the shoulder of saying that you matter kid, you matter and it was such an enlightening and beautiful experience um, if I'm being honest. Uh, that's all the things that I wanted to tell you about the book. I tried to keep it spoiler free and I didn't discuss the plot at all. If you're curious about this book I highly suggest you to pick it up because it was really good. Thank you for watching this video. I hope to see you soon in my next one. Bye!